Hi, today I'm gonna to go over five healthy habits for entrepreneurs moving into 2021. You know, being an entrepreneur isn't easy, whether you own a small business, work from home, any type of self-employment, you typically, especially if you're working online, find yourself sitting a lot. And we know that sitting isn't healthy. So today I'm gonna to go over some quick tips that will help you with your health, both from a movement standpoint and from an eating standpoint. So let's jump right into it. My treadmill desk. I absolutely love this thing. You know, I bought the wood at Home Depot probably 12 years ago, and it's one of the best things that I've ever done. You know, working from home, I have about a 12 hour day in today, and one of the best parts about that is I have over 30,000 steps, and it's because I spent so much time right here walking and doing my work. You know, I start each morning with this and I walk in about 2.6 mile an hour and that's just fast enough to get your blood pumping, adrenaline going, endorphins kicking in, but yet I can still type. I can still do a lot of the online work on my computer. In fact, I did it for hours today, right? So it's something that I highly encourage you to do or just a standing desk. Sometimes I'll get sick of walking and I'll just stand here, but it allows you to not only get healthier, we know that sitting is bad, so you're standing as well. And you know, something magical happens right about 21 minutes for me. At 21 mi minutes, I can feel the endorphins kick in. I can feel uh, just kind of a lighter mood. I have more energy. And you know, when you start your day like this, it really leads to a better day. Number two has to do with healthy eating. And I'm no doctor. This is just something that I have implemented that I've seen just amazing results from. So always check with your doctor. But when it comes to eating, I've done intermittent fasting for about the last three years. And basically, it's where you have a small time of a small window of time where you'll eat food and then you'll fast the rest of the time. One of the easiest ways to do it is start with about an eight hour window. You're only going to eat during that eight hours and then the next 16 hours you don't eat. As you get better at it, you can shrink that window depending on how you feel, but there's tons of benefits. I encourage you to Google intermittent fasting and you'll see a, a lot of the different benefits from it. Now there's different types of fasting where people will, you know, only fast a couple days a week. I find that tough for me to do because then I want to overeat when I start eating again. So for me, I typically stick to a six hour window and that's where I eat from either noon to six or some days it'll be 10 to four. It just depends what I have going on. And I find from a weight management standpoint, from an energy standpoint, it really gets me where I want to be, right? And everybody's different for sure. Um, but yes, do some Google research on that. There's just tons of information out there, but I will give you this one piece of information that I think is critical. Start slow. Don't jump right into the short four hour fasting, you know, eating time and fasting for 20 hours because you're really just setting yourself up for failure. In fact, if you make too many changes with your eating all at once, then once again, you just put yourself in a, a bad spot and really close to failure, right? So it takes 21 days for us to form a habit. So I recommend starting slow with this. Even a 10 hour window is fine, especially if you're not eating late at night. Most of us have that problem of, you know, snacks and junk food sound really good later at night. So if you can cut that window shorter, move your time up a bit, even though you're eating longer, you tend to see better results that way as well. When it comes to movement, I'm a little biased but I've been in martial arts for many, many years. And the benefits there, both physically and mentally, are so numerous. And, and I can tell you that, you know, when you start training in martial arts, like all beginners, you know, your balance isn't that great. You don't know your body quite as well as you think you do. And slowly over time, you start to see more and more progress. You know, one of the keys to doing that is to find a martial arts that fits your style, right? And the best way to do that is visit a local martial arts school and watch a class. 
and make sure that they're doing the things that you want to do? Is it a class that are you looking for more discipline, very focused, uh, no smiling, no laughing in class? The more traditional, that's available. Or would you rather be in a class where people are laughing, having a good time still, but still working hard and getting a great sweat? You know, a great program is, a, is going to allow you to evolve over time, not drop you into a class where you're just dying right away. In most of the good programs, you'll be able to stop, take a break, breathe, relax, and then jump back into it. And slowly, and that, that really is the key, slowly over time, you get better and better and you build more strength, you build more balance, and you build more flexibility. And as you do that, not only do you get rid of a lot of the little aches and pains, but overall, you feel better. Number four is yoga. If you haven't tried yoga, I highly recommend that you do. And there's a couple different ways that you can do that. One of my favorites, I actually have two. One of them is hot yoga, where you're in a studio that's about 105 degrees, you sweat like crazy, cleanses the body, you get anywhere from an hour to an hour and 20 minute workout, depending on the class. And what I really like the most about yoga is the flexibility, right? As we get older, things tighten up, and especially if you're somebody sitting at a desk a lot of the day, if you're sitting at your computer, yoga is a great, great way to get not only more flexibility, but to relieve the stress and free your mind a little bit. You know, the other one that's fairly new is called Hot Works, and that's where you go into um, individual saunas, I think up to three people, and instead of a live instructor, it's a video on a screen. And they have all different types of workouts from, I guess, Pilates to elliptical and bike. And I really like the yoga class in there. And once again, this one, you kind of go at your own pace when you need to stop and breathe. You can do that. But the saunas, I think, are right around 125 degrees, infrared heat. And it's just, boy, you leave there and you've, you're, you're drenched, right? You've sweat out the toxins. You feel great. So if you've never tried a yoga class, I highly recommend you make 2021 the year that you try it. For number five, I actually have two. I'm going to give you a bonus, but one of them is running, right? Uh, I used to I used to tell people when they'd say, oh, do you run at all? I'd, I'd say, you know, I, I'm not built to run. And, and really, it isn't true. It just, I hadn't put in enough practice to get to the point where I really enjoyed running. And you know, this year I put it on my bucket list that I wanted to complete a marathon. And I actually did that. And uh, <laughs> crazy difficult. And, and I don't encourage you to make that your goal and, unless it's something you really wanna do. But you know, you can start almost with a run walk, nice and easy, kind of keep it lower impact. You don't have to be running fast. In fact, I recommend that you don't start out running fast. But running is a great way to, once again, burn calories, get outside. Uh, I don't, I love, I love my treadmill for walking. I never run on it. When I'm running, even in the winter, I like to be outside. And that one, I guess, goes hand in hand with weightlifting, right? I know that they're two totally different sports, but I like to work the running for my lower body and then for the upper body and my core, I really like the weightlifting. You know, a big mistake people make when they start weightlifting is they go in and try to lift too much weight. And then they leave and they're so sore, they can hardly move the next day. And then the second day soreness is usually worse. And then they're like, man, I, I'm never doing this again. You should go in and just where you barely start to feel a little discomfort, stop there. And you should do that for the first few weeks. Like anything new, we have to build into it slowly, right? And, and I think too many people are, are looking for that magic pill. You know, they want to get in shape right away. They want to be able to do this right away. They want to see success right away. And I know we live in that type of a world where we have access of everything so quickly. But when it comes to your health, it takes time, right? So you're much better off starting slow and getting better slowly than trying to spike it and then be so sore or face failure and just not be able to see the success that if you've gone that if you would have gone slowly you would have seen so 
If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button. And also down below in the comment, please put I subscribed. I reply to all of my comments. And thanks for watching today. Make it a great day.